Welcome to the Monday, August 21st, 2023 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Uh, Martha Smirsky, member. <laughs> Benjamin Cheney, member. Eric, you want to do yours again? I think you and Martha were talking at the same time. Sorry, yes. Eric Gilbertson, member. Stephen Everett, member. And Meredith Crandall, staff. Okay, Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures and process? Yes. Give me just one second. I want to close down a couple of extra windows because I have a lot of stuff open right now. All righty. I'm going to share my screen. Um, this is mostly for um, people who are watching this via Orca Media so that they know how to get into the meeting. Do, do, do. All right. That doesn't want to work right now. Interesting. And it's frozen. Give me a second. Huh. There we go. It just took a little while. All right. Let's try this again. There we go. Everybody can see that? Yes. Yes. Right. Um, all right. So. For those of you viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via the Orca Media platform, you can participate in tonight's meeting through either video or telephone access options um, by logging into Zoom. You can either type this link into your web browser and it should bring the Zoom um, browser right up and um, or the Zoom um, platform and I'll let you into the meeting. Um, or you can dial into this phone number and put in this meeting ID um, and I'll let you in so you can ask questions and hear everybody talk and see whatever we're sharing on screens. If you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, please do keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand, either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar and wait until you're called on. Um, so far this evening, it looks like um, we just have applicants or people representing them and um, our committee members on Zoom, um, but I will let you know if somebody else comes in. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain because this is the only option for the meeting. There's no in-person. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Derek. Martha. Ben. And Steve. Agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything else to add at this point, we can go to the first application for 8-20 Langdon Street, Lucky Boardman, Review for replacement windows. Lucky, are you there? Hi, this is Bill Morvan, um, standing in for Lucky today. Oh, okay. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you for coming back. And describe the application for the windows that is now before us. Uh, so Lucky is still looking to re replace the, the windows on the second and third floor of the Langning Street project. Um, we have now specced out a Marvin Elevate window uh, with a stone white exterior, uh, a white interior, um, and a two over one simulated divided light grid pattern. Uh, there'll be an insert unit. Based, and it's uh, uh, based on all sort. I'm sorry? The uh, material that it's made of, is it in all tracks? Is it, it is. a fiberglass? It is. 
It is all Trex fiberglass on the exterior, pine on the interior. Yeah. So it is the wood frame with the with the clad exterior. Correct. And you said a white exterior? Correct. And Lucky gave me a note that they'd scraped somewhere and they found white. So they assume that was an original color or a color at some point in time. Um, so I'm just sharing my screen really quickly um, because I know that Eric at least was having some problems getting into the updated packets. Um, and so this is the, the details on the windows. There's, there's different sizing, so there's different pictures, but the basics here about the elevate double hung insert and the colors um, are all right in here. So it's the reason that we have several different options is because of the sizing. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yep. Perfect. And I actually didn't, we, we, you, you didn't get given all of the details of the different pages. We, I just went with the first page on the, so you could see the different sizes um, that they were getting alternate sizes to match the windows that are there on the building right now. Which is why that they came under like with five of these and, and seven of another one, that sort of thing, rather Correct. than having a hundred. Correct. It's, yeah, it's not a, it's not a hundred windows, all the same size. It's uh, a variety of windows that really the size depends on each opening in an old building like that. They can mm -hmm. vary even if originally the board, the same size window as you know, buildings moved over years, um, but also, you know, bedroom window, bathroom window, kitchen window are all typically different sizes as well. Yeah. Yeah. This seems like a significant improvement to me. Yes, the the Marvin is an excellent window. That wood frame clad Altrex is a the very nice unit. I agree. So do I. It's a nice product. And does anybody Bill, you're, have... Bill you you're an employee of RK Models. Yes. Yep. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, when we were first talking with Lucky, it sounded as though it was not possible to get a Marvin and was going with some other variety of window, a Farley. Uh, but it seems as though you're able to find Marvins that will, can do this job. Correct. When the windows are installed, is there a trim on the outside of the window that will be painted? It looks like the trim, I can't tell if the trim now is a storm window or if the trim is a white or off-white color. The, the existing trim should actually stay in place. This is an insert window being a replacement, yes. so it'll actually go right into that existing opening. Right. Um, the window will be installed from the inside with the right. interior stops being taken out. Um, and in theory, that's the only thing that should have to be manipulated. Okay. Is the stops on the, the right yeah. and the header. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions regarding the new windows? Uh, the picture that you've showed us has the a white surrounding around the windows. That That's how it will look. That is the frame of the window, correct? Okay. Okay. Any other members have any other questions regarding the new windows? I'm good. Okay. I can go down through the criteria. There's a criteria sheet for all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. And for historic structures, the removal of historic materials, they characterize an historic property should be avoided unless in this particular case, the the new replacements are of a quality and 
uh, profile to match the existing character defining features, finishes and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize that historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Although where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind, which they are. Um, there's the, the, no treatments are, that are causing any damage to historic materials. So this is acceptable. Is it, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Proportion. Compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors is acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved, which they are, that's acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of, of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect that doesn't apply to the existing building and the windows are acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind as in this case. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but each replacement must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. That's acceptable. All in favor of the application with the Marvin windows, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha, I say yes. Ben. Ben says yes, and Steve says yes. So it passes for the nothing in favor. Thank you very much. Hey, Bill, please tell Lucky that we really appreciate his coming back with these changes. I will certainly do that. Thanks for listening. We appreciate yes. your time. Thank you very, very much. And also wish him luck with his project. I will. He's got a lot going on there, that's for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Lucky. Have a great, great night. Lucky will hear from you via email when the permit's ready, Bill. Okay, great. Thank you, much. Thank you. Bye-bye. We can move forward to the next application for 89 Main Street. Doug Netty, Artisan's Hand Review for a replacement of a new sign. Is someone uh, there? Yeah, this is Martha. I, I'm going to recuse myself here. I work for Artisan's Hand, and even though it's probably not strictly a, con a conflict like, because I don't have any financial interest, um, I just feel more comfortable recusing. Okay. Is someone there to describe the application? Leslie, I think you might be muted. Uh oh, Leslie's here. She's logged in. Uh, she was on earlier and I could hear her talking. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I'm Leslie Kaler. I'm on the board at Artisan's Hand. Um, I'm here instead of Lachlan Smith, who did the paperwork and application for you um, for the for our sign, hope, our hoped for sign on um, the front of City Center. Um, I, I assume you have all the the visuals there to to look at as I describe the the sign. Is that correct? Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, 
Yep, Leslie, we can hear you. I'm just, I'm gonna um, try and get there on the application packet so I can share the screen. Okay. But they also got the packet. So just okay. give me a minute and I'll pull it up, but you can describe the sign. Oh, okay. Um, so the sign is approximately two feet by 22 feet, which is um, considerably larger than the sign that we have had up on the front of city center for the, since 1991. Um, it's one eighth inch thick dye bond aluminum background with a painted border. Um, it's a half inch thick raised and painted letters. The letters are, are wooden, I believe. Um, it's bordered with a yellow or gold paint around the black background sign. Um, there, our logo is on the left hand side, um, something we've used since the 70s as, as our logo, the hand with the pear in it for Artisan's Hand Craft Gallery. Um, we are, we would like to have four lights above it since it's a much um, longer sign than the, than the sign we have had up there, which had two lights. Um, let's see, what else? Um, we have wood and wood, a, a uh, we we have permission from our landlord Doug Netty to put a sign up up in that space. Uh, wood and wood has given us an estimate for um, for what the sign will cost. Wood and wood, um, I believe, uh, yeah, wood and wood will do the installation of the sign. Um, do, you know how, do you know how large the letters are on the sign? Twelve inches. Okay. Yeah. Um, the sign, yeah. So the sign that we're, we also have a sign over on the, um, on the corner of, uh, the building. It faces, you can see it right there, faces, uh, Bohemian. Uh, it's a very faded sign. It's from the seventies, probably. Uh, we're, we're also, wondering if we can take our sign that's on the front of the building right now and put it replay put it on put it uh, where this old sign has been for all this this time it's a much better um, and clearer sign much more colorful and easy to see than the faded old sign so that that um is not really in the application but we're hoping that we can uh we can we can do that as well are those two signs of comparable size? The one that we would replace uh, the old one with is slightly smaller than the one that's up there now. Meredith, does the square footage fit to do that? Yes, the square footage works for that. Um, and okay. I, I'm trying to think if we have a picture in here. I'm going to stop share for a second. I don't know if we have a picture of what's there now on the front. I mean, we're all kind of familiar with it, but um, I might just pull that up on Google Maps so that you can see what's on the front right now. Yeah. What's the length of the existing sign? Do we know? Um, let's see, sign sign area. Of, um, existing signage, fifteen square feet. Yeah, you. We didn't have the existing sign width on here. I mean, it's 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 significantly smaller. Um, hold on one second. Um, well, I mean, it's it's covered. It's about half the width of what's being proposed because two sign two two lights cover it um, quite easily. So let me do a different screen share. Right, so there's the um, existing. Yeah, okay. that's. Then the letters, as you can see, are much smaller on on yes. this. Old. Yes. Um, and then the proposed would cover go over the door 
the proposed actually the sign sign as a whole it looks like you actually shifted where those two lights are as well because mm -hmm. the the proposed new sign starts over the door and extends all the way over both of those windows yes that's so right. it's it's really almost three times the width of what's there now it covers this whole area where there you have the um metal oh. insects yeah so both of those windows are ours that we have displays in and then the door um, so it, it covers that whole area that right now to the right of that old sign are some um, some iron birds and frog forms that those would come down and the sign would go over that whole area. The background is um, green. The background of the where the sign is, what the sign is placed on is green. That's something that that Nettie has used throughout the a uh, lot of the trim of the building. Yes. It's on the windows as well. And, uh, the sign we're looking at over the door is the one you propose to move to East State Street? Yes, that's right. Do any members have any questions about the sign? No, I, I'm good with it. I mean, even though the, the letters are fairly large, uh, that set back from the street. And, you know, one of the places you'd be looking at it is quite a ways away. I'm thinking Kitty Corner on yes. stage. I have no problems with it. Okay. If everybody is okay, well, I can read through the criteria sheet for the signs in the district. Number one, size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bans on historic structures, acceptable here. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. This one's acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively acceptable. And then I'll make a note here that the optional change applicant may move the existing sign in the in the front of the building to replace the one on the side of the building. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Ben. And Steve. So the vote is three in favor. Excellent. <laughs> Meredith, do you want to describe the next step yeah um so i think because the the option is in there it's not like a recommendation of some new new condition that you need to comply with um once we get the form from steve um we'll we need to do an administrative site plan report so it to add a little bit more time because we have to factor in all the lighting um, but we will get that out and the permit as soon as possible um do you want us to send it out via mail or do you want us to email you when everything's ready to be picked up uh you could email me i think okay. I, you've, got, you've got my email so that'd be yeah. easy 
Yep. No, that's, we've, we've been doing that a lot um, because the mail still isn't very reliable right now. So people yeah. want their permits. Yeah. Awesome. And so is there something else I need to be doing? I'm just waiting for you for the um, site plan. Yep, just, just wait for that. I think I have everything I need for all of that. Um, so you should, um, you know, feel free to, to order, order the additional lights, do what you need to do there. Um, but I just have to do the paperwork. Okay. And, and is it okay to go ahead on, on getting the sign ordered and yeah. start? Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Leslie. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for coming and good luck with your new sign. They, they do a very nice job. It should look great. Yeah. I think it'll look really, really awesome and it'll look nice and fresh and uh, it'll help out a lot. So really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> We can move to the next application for Taylor Street, City of Montpelier applicant. Uh, placement of a seasonal banner. Is there someone there to describe the application? Hello, everybody. My name is Clayton Clark, and I'm the general manager of Green Mountain Transit, and I would like to describe the application. Okay. And so we are looking to, uh, from uh, August to December each year, to be able to fly a, a banner uh, that would be hanging uh, between two of the uh, support posts that are at the Montpelier Transit Center. And um, if I could ask Meredith if you would be willing to open that up, thank you. And so uh, uh, Green Mountain Transit uh, operates two seasonal services. Uh, to support Sugarbush and Stowe uh, areas. And uh, um, and so you can see there, that's what the uh, banner looks like. It's 12 feet by three feet. And um, uh, just letting uh, the public know as they go by that we are looking for uh, seasonal uh, employees. And it hangs uh, right there between those two uh, posts uh, at the transit center. And uh, so it is a high visibility uh, spot with the traffic that's going by um, Taylor Street. Um, and I've heard from staff uh, that uh, we had good response from uh, hanging it there previously. I'm guessing that we probably did not go through the correct uh, uh, process of getting it reviewed if, if uh, we did that uh, uh, before. And so one of the things that uh, we are looking uh, uh, for here is not just uh, uh, your forgiveness for our past transgressions, uh, but then uh, making this uh, an approval for future years uh, so that we wouldn't need to go through this process if, uh, if you thought that that would be acceptable. Um, I think the key thing in looking at that, because it's hard to tell uh, scale-wise, is that those, um, those two posts are 15 feet apart and so uh, the banner would fit nicely uh, between them with about an 18 inch frame uh, above the banner and on either side. And when we do that, the banner is a, uh, a little over nine feet uh, on the ground. So where do you ski for free? Ah, so it depends on which mountain you work at. If you work at uh, the Sugar Rush Mountain, you get to uh, be there. And if you work at Stowe, you get there. Uh, we have a handful of folks that work both mountains, and I think they have to pick one. <laughs> okay, just curious how it's, that worked. You know, uh, you joke about it, but I think that the reason why we're able to uh, recruit this seasonal workforce is because uh, they're mostly part-time, and they're mostly doing it for that free ski pass. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so certainly happy to answer any questions that you may have. And uh, um, and so one of the things that I did want to know is that if we were to um, change the banner in future years, if we would need to, uh, to do uh, a new permit application. Meredith, would you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think that the the design review committee definitely has the authority to say that as long as the size doesn't change because it's seasonal. I mean, this isn't 
I put this under the sign with the sign form because that's the closest thing this is to. Um, you know, it's not changing the building in any way. But my thought was if the design review committee was good with the dimensions, um, I would be perfectly fine. And I think there's room in the regs for them to approve, you know, alternative designs for the banner as long as the shape and the size stay the same in the placement. Would they need any administrative approval or nothing? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't require anything, to be honest. OK. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank yep. you. Yeah. Thank you. Any committee members have any questions, comments, or suggestions? Not if, for me. Okay. Let it fly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quickly read through the criteria again for this sign. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building, building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands and restrict structures. This temporary sign is fine in that location. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and sizing. Acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. Acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials. Acceptable. Sign design, color, and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the banner, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha, I say yes. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So four in favor. It Thank you so much. And uh, before I go, I just want to let you know that uh, GMT had its first uh, Zoom bombing uh, at one of our uh, public meetings last week. Uh, so uh, it, uh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it is, that's the first one. I, I staffed three different uh, public meetings. You know, three different committees. This is the first one we've had since we started doing this. So hopefully we won't keep having them, but you never know. Um, so we have on here uh, that with you as the main contact for the permit. So should we just email or, or mail that out to you because it would be going to Burlington? Um, email or mail, whatever is. Uh, okay, well, you, there's a, there'll be a notice there that has to be posted oh. on the site. Um, so, I mean, cause the other option is to email. And then if there's somebody local who's there that you want to come pick it up so they can post that blue notice card. But on the other hand, if you want to make sure you have the original permit there at headquarters, we can just yep. mail it all out to you and then you I, can shift it through. I think that I'll uh, ask John Sharasakis, our operations manager that works out of the Montpelier Transit Center, just to walk down to your office and pick okay. it up. So we'll email you when it's ready. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank Thanks you so much. Coming. Thank you for coming and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from August the 7th? Yes. And I make a motion to accept them the way they're written. Do we hear a second? All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Ben. And Steve. Minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business? Um, I have a question for you all under the other business. Um, we have a lot of businesses who are looking at relocating um, where they are. Um, and administratively, I already approved one business that shifted from one location within a building pretty much right next door so that the sign was just moving next door. It's on the same building. It's in the same, you know, uh, um, sign band. So there was really no no real change for that one. Um, we do have another. <clears throat> which which one was that one? Uh, that was Splash. 
Uh-huh. Um, we have another business that is looking at moving buildings, like totally different buildings, still right in the downtown core. Um, and, you know, they contacted us. They It wasn't soon enough to get on tonight's meeting. Um, and unfortunately, they can't be here tonight. But we have, you know, we, there's some others that are talking about moving like Onion River Outdoors, where I know where this is going to be coming up again about people wanting to use their existing signs and move them to different buildings. And that's where I start to feel like, hmm, <laughs> we should probably have the design review committee take a look at those if they're moving to a completely different building because you you have different building styles and sizes. But I wanted to run that by y'all and just see what you had to say on that. Which building are they moving to? I honestly can't even remember. Um, and I think it was a phone call. Uh, Meredith, was it was this no, uh, notion wanting to move across the street? I think that might have been notion wanting to move across the street into to Splash's old space. That's what Thank I, you. I, I've Thank heard you. that. Yep. So notion, which is on the um, the near corner Charlie's. near the alley next to Charlie O's, wanting to move across the street to the bigger brick building where Splash was. Um, and so I missed you froze up for me. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so it's the, the about Onion River. Uh, yeah. Well, I know Onion River may be moving to city center as a possibility. Um, and then Notion um, is talking about moving where Splash used to be. So Notion in the small building that has um, Charlie O's in it moving across the street to the big Brit big brick building so it's i mean in both cases you're having businesses move from one location to another with very different building styles and structures um and so that's i'm trying to get a sense from you guys where you sort of draw the line of it's something that i can approve because it, it there's not different architectural features to consider when you're talking about moving it in a location on the same building versus moving from one building to another even if they're still in the, you know within a block of where they were i guess my thought is that we have to make it as easy as we possibly can for those business owners and that was my thought as well i think i think that uh you know any sign uh we've got downtown is probably going to work in another location uh I, I don't know where they're planning on going in city center but you know, any sign is going to work fine on city sign um, uh, that you never had. How about would... if how about if we say that? I mean, especially if it's being put into a sign band, and we're not talking about new um, support structures or anything like that, or putting new holes in a building. If it's being moved from one sign, you know, a building into another, where where it's being moved to has a sign band, and it's going in the sign band that seems like something that can be administratively approved easily. Yes. Yeah. A absolutely. If absolutely. it, I mean, if it, if it somehow comes close to the criteria, I would say administratively approve it with the least amount of e extra work. Great. Uh, if, if it's something quirky or they want to do a, a whole new sign or a different location, or, I mean, we'll leave that up to you. Yep, I, I will. I will take a look at it, and those that I can approve administratively, will. I'll just make sure to put a caveat in there about it. This being something that's expedited because of you know the post flood yes. and being able to move locations, um, and and definitely you know if they're trying to put in new support structures, I'll send it to you. But if they're just moving it from one location to somewhere else where it's a simple sign band, yes, or where another sign was already installed and they're using the same holes, um, that's great. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Meredith, my only concern would be if they start to make, if the existing sign is really, really large to where, where it seems abnormal in the new place. Yeah. That's my only concern. Yeah, we'll be, I'll be taking a look at that as well. I mean, because we have the limits on width of signs based on the width of a building facade. Okay. Um, not to mention the total sign allowance for a building. Um, so those are two different size factors that come into play um, that'll help with that a lot. And those are things that you can. Those are things we make review decisions on. Yep. Right. Those are okay. things we review on every sign all over the city. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And the, and the same any other changes to storefronts or anything that have come up is 
we recover from the flood? Um, not yet. We, I, I've got some questions about to, with uh, the Northfield Savings Bank because they had some. Um, I didn't quite understand. They've got to send me drawings and, and clarification on changing the size of a door. Um, but so far, nobody else is really talking about changing their storefronts. I think the everybody's just trying to get to where they can reopen, um, and then when we get further down the line and talk about making changes to buildings for flood resiliency, that's when, um, you know, storm gates, things like that will be coming up that the design review committee may need to take a look at because it's going to change the look of a front of a building to be able to install the hardware to be able to have those flood gates. Okay. I think we're going to have to be very accommodating in terms of uh, improving the flood resistance in downtown. Uh, I suggested using impervious materials uh, inside. Uh, and, and Steve, I, I took your uh, beaver suggestion uh, a little <laughs> further. <laughs> Steve was trying to raise money to import beavers. <laughs> well, but I, but we, I, need, I, I, we need, I, we need, we need a dozen dams between here and the height of the land on Route 12 going north towards beyond Worcester. <laughs> well, I, I, I uh, thought and actually checked out with Jeff Queto, who's uh, the idea of a a significant number of small dams close to the headwaters. Uh, that could store water temporarily. Uh, and that came out of your beaver because that's what beavers do. <laughs> so it's a natural solution. It seemed like a really economical way to get, get a job done. <laughs> <laughs> I said, have you ever tried to herd beavers and get them to go where you want? <laughs> Not. <laughs> but I think, I think, you know, looking at, uh, uh, materials on the storefronts and seeing, uh, uh, I think, you know, getting a group together to look at impervious materials. I, I noticed when they showed the video of the pavilion building, I think, uh, for example, they were closing, uh, cleaning the steel or uh, metal studs and the wooden, because you want an impervious surface, then you can clean it with wood that's too absorbent. So I think looking at some of that, and I think, I think that's why the yellow mustard got open is because their uh, uh, material on the inside was actually roofing that they metal roofing that they had done. So they were able to take it off, uh, clean it, clean up, and put it just put it back on again, wash it, put it back on again. So uh, I think it, we should be looking at some, make some suggestions, and think about that. Great idea. Meredith, this is, I, I assume, per per the beaver comment, but in all seriousness, uh, our dams are outside of our purview as far as like uh, the removal or how they get built. We yeah. wouldn't have any comment on that. Right. But I mean, this is sort of a, you know, other business. Um, yeah. I, what yeah. I didn't say is encourage all of you to participate in the community meetings that are happening. There's going to be another one tomorrow that goes into breakout sessions um, for, for subtopics um, and keep throwing those ideas out, um, you know, especially in those forums or by, by emailing people at the city and state levels. Um, because I mean, it's not just a Montpelier problem, it's a statewide problem. Um, but Montpelier definitely is going to have to make some changes over the next um, years and possibly decades to make sure that we can withstand those kinds of floods um, more frequently than every hundred years. One of the things, I mean, my interest obviously is historic buildings, but if we don't solve in some way, reduce the flood damage in downtown, we're going to lose the buildings because yeah. it's no tenant. I think I sent you a copy of what I sent to the Padlet. Padlet, is that the right thing? I think so. <laughs> I'm not really involved in it too much. But yes, no. I think they called it a Padlet. Um, and yeah, I, I think, and you're also, um, you know, it might be worth going and attending city council on Wednesday. I think that um, Mike Miller is going to be 
um, presenting something then. Um, I know that he's going to be coming out with a statement at some point soon um, about his his thoughts and vision, you know, short, medium, and long term for planning in the city, um, for having it be a more flood resilient community. Um, you know, this has been he's he's been in that kind of multi-stage planning um, vision for a long time now in his job. Um, and so he's he's looking at how things could happen um, in a doable way. Um, so I'd keep your eyes open for that. I think that'll that'll be helpful. Well, good. Does anybody else have anything to add at this point? Or do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank everybody. You. Remember thank, that you. thank you for saving us from the hat person. Oh, well, I'm sorry it took me so long. I was just like, what? what is going on and who is it coming from? Um, so, yeah, sorry about that. Um, and a reminder that our next meeting is on the Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay. Yes, okay. thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye. I, one Bye. one Bye. more thing. Oh, Steve, yeah. uh, Steve, you and I's terms expire oh. on the 9th. Of September? Yes. Yeah, I so... noticed that as I was trying to maneuver my way in. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Eric. I forgot to write that down after you told me. Uh, so, yes, I will send you both an email with the links for the applications um, so you can get your applications in because I, I really hope you both are still going to want to be on design review. Otherwise, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we, we're okay. Okay. We've, we've survived so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, awesome. Thank you all. Thanks. And I'll drop Thanks. off the forms tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.